In this video I'll talk a bit more about the role of Hessian matrix in maximum likelihood estimation and particularly when we find the maximum of the likelihood function using the Newton's technique. Also I'll talk a bit about how to interpret the Hessian matrix and what you, should you check in the Hessian matrix when you think that there may be a convergence problem in your model or if your model even doesn't converge. So uh, the first thing that we need to address again is why should an applied researcher care? The reason why you should care is that sometimes uh, you get these messages from your statistical software, this is data, and uh, about Hessen, uh, you may get an error message telling that Hessen is not negative semi-definite. To understand what that means will help you uh, to fix the problem, otherwise it's just a trial and error until you figure out something that works without really understanding what was the problem in the first place. Also, it's possible that you get a solution, but you didn't actually solve the original problem, but you just happen to find a, a way that uh, makes the problem disappear without solving it. Then it's also possible that you get this information about um, uh, these estimation challenges the computer faces, but in the end there is nothing problematic going on. And to understand in which scenarios you should uh, be worried in which scenarios you can just look at the estimates and not worry about that. You need to understand a bit about what the Hessen matrix is and uh, what it tells us. So uh, when we maximize the likelihood we typically do that with numerical optimization. We try different values at uh, this likelihood function here. We try different values of x until we find that the value of the function is maximized when we set x to 3. In practice what we do is that we don't uh, maximize this by a computer. Instead we, uh, we do it by looking at the, uh, where the zero point of this first derivative is or we, if we have a multiple parameter estimation problem such that we estimate mean and standard deviation from the same data then uh, we have two derivatives, derivatives that are in the gradient vector and we look for a gradient vector where uh, all the elements of that vector are zeros. And we do that with the help of uh, the second derivative on the, the purple line here. If we have multiple, uh, multiple uh, parameters that we estimate then uh, the second derivatives go into Hessen matrix. So if you have two parameters then the Hessen is two by two matrix. Quite often we apply a Newton technique and uh, we, uh, when we maximize the likelihood uh, we use the first derivative and the second derivative and uh, or the gradient vector and the Hessen matrix when we have multi -parame multiple parameter problems. How exactly this process works I explain in another video but now we focus on, on the Hessen matrix and what does it mean for the Hessen matrix to be uh, convex or, or concave or not concave or or not semi, uh, positive semi or negative semi definite and so on. Let's take a look at uh, what convex and concave functions are and what does it mean for a function to be strictly convex or strictly concave. So a convex function is one where the, deriv where the second derivative is always positive or zero. So when uh, the second derivative is zero then it means that the function is, is a straight line at some point. So we have a straight line here this part and then this part curves up or if we uh, travel along the line we always turn slightly to the left and it's convex because of the straight part. This is strictly convex so it means that we always uh, when we travel along the line we always turn slightly to the left so we go first turn left until we have our zero and then we go up again. Then um, con a concave is the same except we have a uh, a line and then we go down and strictly concave is that we always curve right. If we uh, turn right and then turn left or turn left and then turn right then that is neither convex nor concave and this is the last example shows a function like that. So uh, do we need to care about this uh, non uh, if, if function is not concave or not? Uh, let's take a look at, at, at this function. So this is a one parameter estimation problem. We try to find the maximum likelihood estimate and this is neither concave nor convex and uh, it's, it's not concave in this part here but it is actually concave here at the maximum. 
So um, is it a problem that this function here first cur curves um, when we go from, from uh, left to right, it first curves left and then right. So it first cur curves up and then down. Well, it's, it's not a problem as long as our computational algorithm uh, can uh, get around this place because this here is the maximum it's concave. It means that with, where, whether we go left or whether we go right, the, the tangent is, is zero, the derivative is zero because it's flat in the top and it curves right down and if we go right because the second derivative is, is uh, negative, it curves down if we go left because the second derivative is negative. So uh, it's important that here when we are at maximum then uh, we always curve down when we start going sideways. For example here we could have a point where uh, the derivative uh, is or tangent is flat and uh, because the second derivative is non-negative it, it means that we are not at the minimum uh, sorry maximum. So whenever we are at convergence we have this thing we have found a maximum likelihood estimates it's important that at that point the gradient vector is zeros and uh, the function is, is uh, concave because it guarantees that we whichever direction we go the, the likelihood will decrease. So uh, returning back to the previous uh, the example with the stata screenshots, the, the uh, screenshot on the left showed uh, problems in the last iteration. Then the screenshot on the right showed an example of this kind of function. So you have a region that is not concave, but then you iterate and you uh, climb up and then uh, at maximum the function becomes concave. So the fact that it's not concave here does not mean that it would, this would not be a valid maximum likelihood estimate. So generally uh, the, the last, last step or some of the steps closer to the last step in the optimization algorithm are more important than something that happens far from the, uh, from the assumed maximum of the function. If we look at the actual um, how the algorithm works for a two parameter estimation problem, we can see that we start from a starting value and then uh, the computer adjusts those values mean and standard deviation to find the maximum of the likelihood. I explain this process in more detail in another video, but here we can see that the gradient is uh, close to zero. It goes to exactly to zero when uh, we are at the maximum and uh, these Hessian matrix the, the second order partial derivative with respect to m and uh, the partial derivative with respect to m and s and then uh, the second order partial derivative of with respect to x these uh, second order partial derivatives go to negative values and this goes to zero and that indicates that whichever direction we go if we increase s or we increase m we decrease s or we decrease m the, uh, the derivative will always be negative which means that we, we go down. So the second order partial derivative tells uh, to which direction the, the first order partial derivative of a, a variable will change when we go to one direction. Now let's take a closer look at what the Hessian matrix is and, and uh, how we use Hessian matrix in this uh, Newton's method optimization. If you have studied some matrix algebra, it will be useful here, but I try to walk you through this uh, if, even if you haven't. So in Newton's uh, me method in matrix form looks like that. So we have uh, x is a, ve a vector of, of whatever the current values are, the starting values initially for m and s in this case. And then uh, h is the Hessian matrix. We invert the Hessian matrix, which is uh, kind of similar to, uh, to dividing something with the matrix and then we have this uh, matrix this is the uh, the gradient here and we can write out the content of the gradient and the content of the Hessian it looks like that so we have here <coughs> I'll use some colors to make it more clear what the different elements are so this is the Hessian matrix and uh, we have first the diagonal this is the uh, the second order partial derivative with respect to m second order partial derivative with respect to s and then we have uh, on the op diagonal elements this is a symmetric square matrix so these two elements are the same it is um, the uh, partial derivative with respect to s and m and then we have the first order partial derivatives 
with respect to f and with respect to s. And what is the meaning of these terms? Well, um, this partial derivative of f with respect to m tells us that from the current point, if we go increase m by a very small amount, how much will the value of f, which in this case is the maximum light, uh, the likelihood function, will change. If this derivative is positive, then it means that we can, uh, in most cases, increase the uh, value of the likelihood by increasing the mean, the m a little. So there are some, some exceptions related to the second partial derivatives. Generally, if, if m and s are independent, then if we uh, increase m by a little and this derivative is positive, it means that uh, the value of f will go up. And then we know that, okay, we should increase m by a little to uh, increase the likelihood because we want to maximize the likelihood. Then these um, second order partial derivatives tell us that how much is the derivative going to change the, the first order partial derivative of m, how much is, is going to change when we change m by a little. So if the derivative is originally uh, zero, so it's a flat and uh, the second order partial derivative is negative, then it means that the derivative starts to increase, starts to go down immediately as we increase m a little. So it, it tells how much the, uh, the surface is, is curving down or curving up. And uh, generally at convergence, these uh, second order partial derivatives here, the diagonal elements should all be negative. <laughs> then the off diagonal elements here, how much uh, the, the partial derivative of f with respect to m and s, they will tell us how much the derivative of f with respect to m changes if we change s by a little, by a small amount. So it kind of tells uh, how the curvature of of f with respect to m is related to the value of the change of s. And I'll, I'll show graphically what this means. When we uh, start doing this uh, Newton's method, we need to calculate the inverse and the inverse of a two by two matrix is uh, calculated like that. So we take the negatives of these, we uh, flip the diagonal and then we uh, multiply everything by one minus the determinant of the matrix. So that's just math and um, then um, we can do this matrix product here. So this is four by four matrix, a two by two matrix. And this is two by one matrix. When we multiply them together, we will get a one matrix that is uh, two by one. So this is a two by one matrix. So this is uh, the first element is uh, the, the second order partial derivative of S multiplied by derivative of M minus the, uh, the uh, second order partial derivative with respect to m and s multiplied by the derivative of s of f, f with respect to s and then there are the second element is, is similar except you sort of switch s and m the other way around. So, so what do these uh, two parts of the equation tells us, tell us? Well the first part is simply a distance because we multiply uh, the, uh, how much m changes and how much s changes by the same constant. So this is the same value for, for both with the scalar. And um, we multiply both elements here with the same scalar. It just tells us the distance. And uh, this second matrix, which is uh, two by one, so two rows, one column, it uh, tells us about the direction and distance. And let's take a look at this, this matrix in more detail and uh, how the direction of where we go is, is determined. So whenever we have a plane on where we have like S on, on Y axis, M on X axis, and we want to find the maximum, we need to decide which direction we go on on that plane and how far. And uh, we, we take these steps until we find the maximum. Generally, the distance of the step will decrease as the algorithm, estimation algorithm gets more and more closer to the maximum or convergence. So direction and distance are important. Let's take a look at uh, the direction first because it allows us perhaps to understand a bit about the role of the second derivatives. So normally the first derivative tells you the direction if second derivatives are close to zero. If the first derivative is positive, it tells us that increase this 
parameter to increase the, the likelihood. If it's negative, it tells that this parameter should decrease to increase the likelihood. And then we either decrease, increase or decrease. So we follow the, uh, the first derivatives in the gradient vector to determine the direction. So, and how is that, uh, how does the second derivatives, how do they influence this, this uh, how we choose the direction uh, where we go on, on the plane of S and M. When in, in more general cases, we may have a space of four or 20 or 50 dimensions and we need to choose a direction from where to we go from the current set of estimates. So here, um, the, the first element of the matrix is the direction for the mean, how far we go, uh, how, how much we adjust mean and to which direction. And the second one is the direction for SD and uh, how, how much we adjust SD compared to the mean. And uh, we can take a look at uh, this and the first thing that we note that at convergence when we have found the maximum of the likelihood then all first order derivatives are typically zero and uh, then this simply zero multiplied by something minus zero multiplied by something equals zero. So we're not going anywhere. So when we are at convergence the Newton's algorithm is not going anywhere. So we, we declare that that's the final result. <laughs> then uh, the idea of this derivative here is that if f is steep with respect to m, we adjust m more. So if a small adjustment uh, leads to a large increase in the likelihood, in, in the likelihood function, then uh, we should adjust m more than adjust s. So if, if adjusting m by one unit increases the likelihood by let's say 10 and increasing s by one unit increases the likelihood by 2 then we should uh, go more toward the direction of m than the direction of s because that is uh, where uh, that gives us the most increase of the likelihood. If f curves heavily with respect to s adjust m more so that's the meaning of of the first the green part here the idea is that if M and S are both have the both have the same gradient value in the gradient. So let's say that the derivative of F is one and derivative of S is one. That would imply that we are just S and M equally much. But if the second order derivative which is typically negative if the function is concave is large it means that uh, the, the derivative of S is going to uh, decrease quite rapidly when we increase s and that implies that we should increase m more than increase s because there are the gains in uh, adjusting s more than m are small. <laughs> and uh, the same thing here if um, f is t with respect to s adjust m less. So uh, the idea is that if there are we get the likely uh, we get a larger increase in likelihood by going to the direction of s then going to the direction of m then perhaps we should go more toward the direction of of s than direction of m and the same thing here uh, if there are if the slope of f with respect to m decreases with, uh, with s adjust m less so the idea is that if if we adjust uh, s and m at the same time then we know that this uh, high large second order partial derivative will uh, make the, uh, the gradient of uh, the, the element of the gradient that corresponds to m uh, to, to decrease quite rapidly we shouldn't go too far along m. So this is the, uh, the meaning of the equation in, in, the, in the Newton's method and how we use the second, or, uh, second order partial derivatives in or the Hessian matrix in Newton's technique. Let's take a look at uh, what convex and concave functions are in, in a two parameter case. So in a two parameter case a function is convex if all its derivatives are positive or zero and uh, they are this element here which is the determinant is also positive. So if you can if you uh, see problems related to determinants in your uh, statistical software output it typically refers to the determinant of the Hessian matrix. So and uh, if the Hessian determinant, if the determinant is uh, let's say zero or something zero then uh, things 
basically fail in Newton's method because you run into division of zero. And uh, in strictly convex functions all of these are, are positive, always positive in concave functions. They are negative, this is uh, negative or zero and strictly concave functions are these are always negative and this is always positive. So um, what is the meaning of this? What does it, how does it relate to these uh, errors about positive semi-definite, negative semi-definite? Uh, negative, if the function is strictly, is concave, so it always curves down or is flat, then the Hessian matrix is negative semi-definite. So the, neg the Hessian matrix tells us about the curvature of the, of the function and uh, if the, it always curves, if it's always straight or curves down, then it's easy for the optimizer because you can uh, just adjust using Newton's technique and uh, then we have negative semi-definite. The computer tells that it's not negative semi-definite. That indicates that uh, it's challenging for the optimization algorithm. If you still get a solution where the Hessian matrix is at the end, negative semi-definite, you're probably going to be fine. What is the, uh, the, uh, the meaning or the definition of positive semi-definite, positive definite, negative semi-definite and negative definite is uh, defined by this kind of matrix equation. So we have a vector z which has the same number of, of um, rows than uh, the Hessian matrix. And if we multiply the Hessian matrix with an arbitrary vector, then the result is going to be always positive for positive definite matrices, always negative for negative definite matrices. So what is the, the meaning of the, this particle equation here? The meaning is that, uh, that z basically tells us to which direction we go and how far. So the idea of a, of a vector, if we draw it in a, a two-dimensional or two-dimensional plane, or three-dimensional space is that it gives us direction and distance. So it's basically one step and in maximum likelihood estimation we want the, the likelihood value to increase and uh, when we are at maximum we want to be at the position that whichever direction we go and regardless how far we go the value of the likelihood function will always decrease because otherwise we are not at the maximum. So at the maximum, we're at, we are at the maximum or what we think is the maximum, then uh, this, if the Hessian matrix is negative semi-definite there and the gradient vector is zero, then that means that whichever direction we go, it's always smaller. Therefore, we know that that point where we are is actually the maximum of the likelihood. If we look at the actual equation itself, the Hessian tells how much the derivatives are going to change if we change all uh, the, uh, the estimates by a little. And when we multiply the Hessian by the z once, we get the, uh, basically the gradient vector. So assuming that the gradient is initially zero, which it is at the convergence, if we multiply the Hessian matrix by z, we get the gradient. If we multiply gradient by z again, then we get the change of the likelihood when z, when we go the direction and distance indicated by z. So that's the idea. So the idea here is that uh, whichever direction we go, there are the, the uh, gradient will be negative, all negative elements, and therefore the, the change will be always negative. So the likelihood will decrease whichever direction we go and that's uh, the consequence of the Hessian being negative semi-definite. So that's, that's what you see here. Hessian is not semi-definite and uh, that's a problem because Theta concluded that well this is something that I, I that the derivative the gradient is zero so that's a possible maximum but the Hessian is not negative semi-definite so it's not guaranteed to be maximum and then it, this, it, it quits because it doesn't know where to go. Let's take a look at uh, graphically what it means for the Hessian or the curvature of the likelihood to be uh, negative semi-definite or non-negative semi-definite. So this is a, a fairly simple case. We assume that the Hessian is constant. So uh, 
we have the Hessian contains three parameters. So on the diagonal, we have the second order derivatives with respect to m and s. And of the diagonal, we have the partial derivatives with respect to s and m. And uh, so we have three values. The diagonals, uh, the off-diagonal elements are symmetric. And uh, if the off-diagonal element is, is zero always, then the derivative of m does not depend on the derivative of s. The m and s here don't have any particular meaning. We just uh, know that the maximum or, or the point where we are looking at is always at m equals zero and it is s equals zero. So we can see here that uh, the maximum is here where m and s are both zero. And why do we know that that's the maximum? We know because the partial derivatives are negative. So we know that uh, if we go from, from this zero, m equals zero, it curves down either way we go. If we have this point of x equals zero, it curves down either way we go. And the curvature of s and m are independent of one another because this second order derivative is, is zero. So, so um, what happens if, if one of the derivatives is a uh, different value than the other? So let's assume that uh, the, the first order, the, uh, the second order partial derivative of, of s is minus 0 0.5 and the second order partial derivative with respect to m is minus 1. It just tells us that the curvature of, of m here is a lot stronger than the curvature of s. So s is more flat, m is more steep, so it's more steeply curved. So it doesn't really matter what's the magnitude of those values. This is still maximum as long as there are the diagonal elements of the Hessian matrix, which contain these two uh, partial derivatives are both negative. If we have a case of non-negative definite matrix, that can happen for two reasons. The simpler to understand it that some elements on the diagonal are non-negative. So uh, the off-diagonal elements are now zero, but the elements on the diagonal, one of them is zero. Particularly, they are partial derivative uh, with respect to s, the second order partial derivative is zero. What that means is that there is the, it's flat. So the surface is, is flat and if the gradient is zero at that point, then uh, the value of the function here will be the same regardless of which value of s we apply. So all s's are equally likely to produce there are the maximum value here and that kind of model is not identified by definition because if you have multiple different sets of parameter values that produce the same value of the likelihood then that's the definition of, of under identification. In practice this means that if you have these negative or, or, or zero diagonal elements our data does not allow us to really say anything about this or at least it doesn't allow us to say what's the one specific best value. <laughs> There's another case that can happen. It is possible that at some point one of the par second order partial derivatives is positive and uh, this is rarely the case when you reach a convergence but it can happen uh, during your estimation procedure and we call this the sa a saddle point and this is because saddle points are problematic for some estimation algorithms. For example, Newton's technique wouldn't be able to work with this kind of saddle point necessarily, and, uh, but you can just try other techniques. The reason why it, it doesn't really uh, work is that you can't determine whether you are, uh, if you want to increase m, you cannot increase the likelihood, you cannot determine whether you should increase s or decrease s, because either way you go, you will have the same amount of increase because there are the surface look lo looks like that. So you can't say that going to the right is better than going to the left. And uh, in uh, some cases, um, statistical software manufacturers or, or pro providers have uh, developed different workarounds for this kind of problems. For example, you can try going right a bit, then you can try going left a bit and see where you end up. But just the textbook implementation of Newton's method wouldn't be able to determine whether uh, to increase or decrease s at this this uh, and it wouldn't be a convergence point either because this is not a maximum. You can increase uh, the likelihood by going positive or negative from uh, s is zero. All right so uh, for the Hessian to be uh, 
negative definite and for the function to be uh, concave we need to have uh, diagonal elements should be negative. So that's what you want to have in the convergence point. So that guarantees that if you adjust x or uh, s or m a little then the likelihood will be smaller which means that we are possibly at the maximum. So we can go anywhere to improve. There are also this other there's also this other condition that relates to the off diagonal elements and uh, let's take a look at that. Again if, if one of these second order partial derivatives are zero that indicates a positive possible identification problem. Let's take a look at the role of, of the uh, the off diagonal elements of the Hessian matrix. So here's an example where both of these second order partial derivatives with respect to s and m are both minus one but these are partial derivative with respect to s and m is positive. It's less than one but it's positive. What that means is that, is that if we go uh, let's say we, we take this point and we go right so we increase m that will decrease the likelihood but it will also make the, uh, the, the partial derivative of the function with respect to s positive. So when we go up along x we actually increase the likelihood. So the idea of, of this second order partial derivative with respect to m and s the, is that um, the, the derivative of m changes when s changes or the derivative of, of s changes when m changes. So originally the derivatives are zero in this example so we are looking at a, a convergence point and when we go right then actually the, we decrease the, uh, the likelihood because uh, m has a negative uh, second order partial derivative but when we go up we actually increase the likelihood because uh, the, the gra gradient or the derivative of f with respect to s actually became positive because of this second uh, order derivative with respect to s and m. And we can see here that this is still uh, a valid maximum point. It's the highest point here. It's just that this surface curves but it doesn't curve evenly and uh, it doesn't matter whether uh, what's the sign of the diagonal it's just what matters is the magnitude so 0 0.5 here is not sufficient to uh, change the, uh, the derivative of one of the parameters to be positive when one of the parameters is changed. This is a non case of non-negative definite so uh, the idea here is that uh, all these elements are minus ones. So there are the diagonal elements are minus ones. We know the second order derivatives with respect to s and with respect to m are both negative. So it curves if we just adjust one of the variables. But if you adjust both of the variables at the same time, we can see that this is actually a, a, a ridge here. So this is the a, a ridge here. So there are, if, this is a combination of m and s values that are that produce the same likelihood. So we can always increase s a little and have the same value of the likelihood function if we at the same time decrease m a little. We can see it here. So this is a ridge here. So all these combinations of parameters are equally likely. The maximum is not unique and this model is not identified because we have multiple different combinations of parameters, uh, parameter values that produce the same likelihood value. <coughs> so the idea is that if we uh, go to the right then the likelihood will decrease because the second order partial derivative of uh, is minus one here. If we then go down the likelihood will increase and it will be back at the original value because uh, of this second order partial derivative with respect to uh, m and s cancelling the effect of, of this here. So the idea here is that the absolute value of the octagonal elements is large enough to make the function flat or curve up. So normally when the absolute value of the octagonal elements are the same then if we look uh, look the function from the top it's kind of look, looks like a, a, a parabola that is spinning around 
but if these off diagonal elements are large then some parts of the parabola are lifted up and it can become straight or it can even uh, become curving up. So for example in this case when this kind of identification problem could occur is that if we estimate that the mean x is s plus m we assume standard deviation of x to be 1 we only have one sample mean we try to estimate two quantities can't do that you can't estimate two quantities from one quantity, the model is not identified. The same thing here as before, so there are the sign of the second order partial derivative with respect to s and m or the off diagonal elements of the Hessian, it doesn't make a difference. The magnitude does, it simply uh, determines to what direction the ridge goes. So here we have a ridge that is uh, going from, from negative m negative s to positive m positive s and in previous case we had a a negative m and, and uh, positive s. So that's the 3D plot of the same problem. In some rare cases you can also have a saddle point. So it's possible that if in absolute terms if, if this is large enough then it's actually uh, <coughs> the, the surface cur curves up at some point and here estimation algorithm would fail because it doesn't know whether it goes left or right because both increase the likelihood by the same amount. So to recap there are, there are convex and concave functions we want to have this criterion here to be uh, always positive. So there are, their idea is that if we multiply the second order partial derivatives which should be negative together then that should be always less than the product of these uh, off diagonal elements. This is of course for a uh, two by two matrix for larger matrices there are um, the math is more complicated but the basic idea is the same. The basic idea is that these off diagonal elements should be small in absolute value compared to the di diagonal elements. And if this doesn't hold if the uh, off diagonal elements are large enough to make the surface flat then we have a position potential uh, identification problem. So what should applied researchers do about it? So what should you do uh, when you inspect the Hessian and what, what things when you should do that and uh, what you should be looking at? It's important to check the last iteration. So if the last iteration indicates that your Hessian was not negative semi-definite or the function is not concave, these may are the same thing just uh, inspected from different angle but they are the non-negative semi-definite Hessian means that the function is not cave, not concave and not concave function always has this uh, non-negative semi-definite Hessian matrix. So you check the last iteration because it's possible that the optimizer had some difficulties early on in the optimization process but then it went, goes uh, through one or two iterations without any problems if the final iteration is you have negative semi-definite Hessian and the gradient is zero, then that's uh, at least the local maximum. Then if you have problems, print out the gradient of Hessian and gradients should be all zeros and in a Hessian inspect a couple of things. Then in Hessian all the diagonal elements of Hessian should be negative. So that means that it, it curves down if you go along any of the variables individually and then you should be looking at are any of the off diagonal elements large in absolute value compared to the diagonal elements. If there are off di diagonal elements that are zero it indicates that the model is not identified for that pa one particular parameter. If there are some off diagonal elements that are large in absolute value then it indicates that the model may not be identified for a pair of, of estimates. And uh, then you can think about, uh, think about those two estimates and think about how the model works and that will probably help you in, in figuring out what the identification problem is. One final thing is that uh, what you should note is that some statistical software uh, don't maximize the log likelihood but instead they minimize the minus log likelihood and in that case uh, what you have here about concave you would have a, a message about convex and you would have a message that uh, Hessian is not positive semi-definite. 
So there, if you sometimes have uh, the, the software telling you that Hessen is not positive semi-definite, then uh, one reason for that could be that the, the library that the software is using is actually for minimization and then the so computer has turned a maximization problem into a minimization problem by just multiplying the likelihood by minus one. But that's something to consider when you look at your own software output.